God bless you on today. We're going to be talking about God's resurrection power. I'm going to pray and then read some scriptures showing God's resurrection power in the Old Testament and in the New. Again, the name of this reading is God's resurrection power. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Yahushua, Yamashiach, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you that the words we speak are spirit and they are life because it is Christos, the anointed one and his anointing in us doing the work. Your word says out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. We thank you that your living water is going to flow now. The Messiah said in John 14 and 10, that is not him that doeth the work, but the Father that works in us. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for doing the work. That your word does not go out and come back void. We rebuke, cancel, nullify, and void the works of the enemy by the blood of the Lamb. In Yeshua's name, amen. So again, we're going to be just reading some scriptures starting at second Corinthians. Uh, 1 Kings, rather, we're going to go to 1 Kings chapter 17, and we're going to look at some scriptures that reveal God's resurrection power. Oftentimes, we're going through trials, tribulations, challenges, and those of us that are born again, many times we're asking God for an answer or a solution. I often tell people this, especially even in my camp, my family, when you're dealing with a negative situation, one of the best ways to overcome that situation is to read or speak scriptures into the atmosphere that display God's power. I'll repeat that. One of the best ways to overcome a trial, a tribulation period, to get strength and wisdom from God when you're dealing with a negative situation, whether it's been a short period of time and especially if it's been a long period of time. The best thing you can do, the best thing I can do besides pray, and prayer is important, is to activate the word of God that shows God's character in his power, in his might, in his strength, in his glory. Because what happens is this, even if that scripture reading or the portion of the text does not directly name your situation, the theme and the common denominator is this. It displays God's power. That's the key. Any scripture, any testimony that shows God's power builds your faith and trust in God and also releases his power. Remember he said in Isaiah, 55, my word does not go out and come back void. So in other words, when it's spoken, when it's advocated, when it's pushed in the atmosphere, it's going to cause a harvest of God's character. He's going to show up. It's the universal law that God put into place. And you got to keep that in mind of seed time and harvest. Not the seed of being de deceptive and manipulated, manipulated rather by ministers telling you if you give to this ministry, blah, blah, blah. Not that garbage. <clears throat> you plant <clears throat> the word of God in your spirit, in your mind. You put the word and the power of God in the atmosphere. So what's the obvious harvest? God's power. If you plant an apple seed and nurture it properly, it brings a harvest of apples. If you plant rose bush seeds and nurture and grow it properly, you get a rose bush or rose bushes. 
It's a universal law that God put into place. So go to 1 Kings chapter 17. <clears throat> it's vitally important. A lot of times the devil will tell people it's a complicated answer, but it's the answer is simple. Speak God's word about his power. Read God's scriptures in the text of the Bible about his power. 1 Kings 17, starting at verse 19, <clears throat> the lady's son had died. Elijah said, give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying, and laid him on his bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, oh my God, have you brought tragedy also upon this widow by slaying her son, causing him to die? Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried to the Lord, O oh Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. The next verse, 22, the Lord heard Elijah's cry and the boy's life returned to him and he lived. Elijah picked up the child, carried him down from the room into the house. Elijah gave the boy to his mother and said, look, your son is alive. Now, how did the mother react? Verse 24, then the woman said to Elijah, now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. Her confidence in God through the prophet her trust in God through the prophet because of the miracle showed up. God's power showed up. Elijah prayed. God answered with his power. That's one example. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 4. So no doubt that mother was happy. The boy was happy. Elijah was happy. And of course, God was happy. God wants miracles to take place the lives of his children, we have to know how to tap in to the mind and the character of the Father. Not the character of the church or tradition, but the Heavenly Father who never fails. So 2 Kings chapter 4, looking at, I believe that's verse, <clears throat> excuse me, 20. After the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, the atmosphere of the prophet, the room of the prophet, where the anointing is already active. Changing the atmosphere is important. Playing videos of godly sermons and godly scriptures. Then shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, please send one of the servants and a donkey so I can go to the man of God quickly and return. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 32. And it says, when Elisha reached the house, there was the boy lying dead on Elisha's couch. Elisha went in and shut the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed and lay upon the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. So he stretched over him, like mouth to mouth resuscitation, but only was stretched out when he did it. He did it once more. The boy sneezed seven times, God's number of perfection, and opened his eyes. Elisha called Gehazi and said, call the Shunammite, and he did. When she came, he said, take your son. She came in fell at his feet and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. So here is another incident where God's resurrection power showed up, it was activated through prayer because of a crisis. Second Kings 13 chapter. This is the Old Testament. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And if you're not careful, the enemy will put doubt, fear, and unbelief in your mind, and you'll think about it and then start speaking it, which is the wrong thing to do. Because if you sow negative words, negative seeds, you will get a negative harvest. Are we to acknowledge problems? Yes. 
Are we to talk about problems? Yes. But after you talk about the problem, lift up the solution more than you lift up the problem. Once the problem is discussed and the solution is there, you activate the solution. Who goes into their car, puts in the key, and then says, car, move. You have to turn the key. There has to be gas in the car. The car has to be working. So you have to activate. Activate. Very important. 2 Kings 13 verse 20 says this. Very interesting verse. Elisha died and was buried. Now Mohabitite raiders used to enter the country every spring. Once while the Israelites were burying a man, suddenly they saw a band of raiders. So they threw the man's body into Elijah's, Elisha's tomb rather. When the body touched Elisha's bones, the dead man came to life and stood up on his feet. That's 2 Kings chapter 13, starting at verse 20, talking about Elisha was dead. The Israelites saw some enemies coming. They threw a man's dead body into Elisha's grave. When that dead body touched Elisha's bones, the anointing and power of God was so strong. God's resurrection power was so present and strong. The man was raised from the dead. He lived. He was dead. He came alive. Your atmosphere needs to change by the power of God. Your atmosphere needs to change by God's resurrection power. You need to release it. Elisha was already dead. He had released it all of his life to the point where even when he's, his body was in the grave, that anointing was still there, still in the atmosphere. Change the atmosphere. Matthew chapter 9, we're going to look at the Messiah, Yahushua. His name is not Jesus. It is Yahushua. The J, there are no J's in the Hebrew language. Uh, Jesus is Greek. It's not even Latin, and it stands for the God of Zeus. So you don't want to be calling on the God of Zeus. You want to be calling on Yahushua. Matthew chapter 9, verse 23. We're going to look at the Messiah in action. When Yahushua entered the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd, he said, go away. The girl is not dead. Notice what he said. She's not dead, but sleep. But they laughed at him after the crowd had been put outside. The Messiah went in, took the girl by the hand. She got up. News of this spread throughout all the region. Here's an example of God's resurrection power. The young girl got up by the power of God because the Messiah, Yahushua, spoke in faith. And remember, the Messiah had the Holy Ghost within him. He said, it's the Father in me that does the work without measure. But if you're born again, you have that same access to God the Father, God the Holy Ghost. So Luke chapter 7, uh, verse 11, soon afterwards, Yahushua went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As Yahushua approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. Special blessing for helping widows, those of you that don't know. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When Yahushua saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then Yahushua went up and touched the coffin, and, ca and those carrying it stood still. Yahushua said to the dead boy, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, Yahushua gave him back to his mother. Verse 16, they were all filled with awe and praised God, saying, a great prophet has appeared amongst us. They said, God has come to help his people. This news about Yahushua spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. He spoke and God's resurrection power raised that young man from the dead. And in those days, especially if a woman was a widow, she needed all the help she can get to run the household and keep things going and also to protect her physically. So definitely she was happy about that and so was God. You need to change your atmosphere. 
even as I'm reading these scriptures and my Bible, it uses the J-E-S-U-S. However, with wisdom from God, I say Yahushua or the Messiah, Yahushua. Because when you call me Bill, I'm not supposed to answer. Why? That's not my name. When you call the Messiah, God the Son, who died, was resurrected, is now seated at the right hand throne of the Father by his proper name, Yahushua. 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 He has to respond because there's a blood covenant between the Father and you. The blood that the Messiah, Messiah shed for the sins of the world. Go to John chapter 11. We're going to look at Lazarus. John chapter 11. We're talking about God's resurrection power coming forth. <clears throat> Verse 38 of John 11. Yahushua, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Yahushua said, take away the stone. Notice how I keep putting the name Yahushua forward. Demons tremble at the name of Yahushua. They don't tremble at the name of Zeus, which is Jesus. They don't tremble at that. They tremble at the name of Yahushua. If you say hallelujah, hallelujah, Y-A-H, the Father's name is there, and the Messiah said, the Father's in him, and he's in the Father. Yah, Yahushua, Yah, Yahushua. They connect. They connect. So also now verse in, uh, it said, take away the stone, but Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, Lazarus, by this time he is in a bad state, he stinks, he has been there four days. Verse 40, then Yahushua was said, did not I tell you, if you believe, you would see the glory of God, you will see the power of God, you will see the resurrection power of God, if you believe. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God honors faith. So release your faith and trust God. Verse 41, so they took away the stone. Then Yahushua looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people that they may believe that you sent me. When Yahushua had said this, Yahushua called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Three words after he talked to the father, three words. Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet were wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Then Yahushua said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Why? Because he didn't need it no more. He was alive. He was alive. Matthew 27, and we're going to go to verse 50. Matthew 27 and 50. God's resurrection power is always available to be activated to come on the scene and to destroy every yoke and to remove every problem. Remember, you can read one scripture about God's resurrection power for any problem that you have and God will show up. Thank God for the victory as you read the scripture because God said in his word, Psalms 22, I believe it is. He inhabits the praises of his people. Matthew 27 and verse 50, we're going to. And when Yahushua cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. This is the crucifixion. At that time, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, letting mankind know that no longer do we need a priest behind a curtain to get access to the Heavenly Father for us. It's now open through the Holy Ghost. The earth shook and the rocks split in earthquake. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. 
They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. God's resurrection power showed up here. And then you got to realize between 20 and 7 and 28, there are really no uh, periods in the manuscripts, original manuscripts. So in chapter 28, as it's broken up here, after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of God came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. They froze. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Yahushua, who is crucified. He is not here. He has risen. He has risen, God's resurrection power. Resurrection power. He has risen, just as he said, come and see the place where he used to be, where, where he was laid. Go quickly and tell the disciples that the Messiah has been raised from the dead. Here again, God's resurrection power, Acts chapter 9. You need to play this video over and over and just trust God that your problems are already solved, that demonic forces are already out of the way, nullified and void by the power of God, God's resurrection power. Acts chapter 9 verse 37 says this. Verse 37, about the time she became sick, Dorcas, and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room, <clears throat> Lydda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Verse 39, Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around crying and showing him the robes and the other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them, while she was still alive. Verse 40, key verse, Peter sent them all out of the room. Why? He didn't want no unbelief in there. And if you have people in your atmosphere, or you yourself are constantly complaining, stop. Lifting up the problem more than you lift up the solution, which is God's resurrection power, stop. Get that out of your life. Then Peter got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. Three words. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then, call, then he called the believers and the widows and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Remember I said, when God's resurrection power comes forth, it builds trust or faith or confidence in God. It shows it right here, and it says it as well. Acts chapter 20, we're going to look at Paul being long-winded. Eutychus was sitting there hearing that word and got sleepy, fell out the window, uh, broke his neck and died. We're going to read that in Acts chapter 20, starting at verse 7. <clears throat> and it reads as follows. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, he kept on talking until midnight. Long message. There were many lamps on the upstairs room where we were meeting, Seated in the window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep, so Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. He was picked up dead. Paul put his arms around him and said, don't be alarmed. He said, he's alive. Then he went upstairs again, broke bread and ate. This is Eutychus. After talking until... Daylight, he left. That was Paul. The people took the young man home alive. Verse 12. The people took Eutychus 
home alive and were greatly comforted. Eutychus was raised from the dead because of God's resurrection power. Revelation 11. We're going to look at the two witnesses, Enoch and Elijah. It's probably spelled Elijah, something along those lines in the original Hebrew. But Revelation chapter 11. God's resurrection power is real. God's resurrection power is always here to help. Verse 7 of Revelation chapter 11. And when they had finished their testimony, the beast that came up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the street of the city, which is figuratively, figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also the Lord was crucified. Remember, the Messiah was crucified in Africa. Israel is located in Africa. Just thought I'd throw that in. Many people teach about the Messiah. They teach about Yahushua, but they fail to say where he actually was born. They named the city, Jerusalem. They named the country, but what continent? Africa. If you do any research on any person, save or unsaved, you're going to have to identify the exact places of location. I was born in New Haven, city, state Connecticut, the country of USA, North America. It's just plain right. For three and a half days, the men from every people and tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their dead bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will glow over them, will celebrate by sending each other gifts because the two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. Verse 11. But after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God, Kadarobosha, entered them and they stood on their feet. I'll read that again. Revelation 17, 11. But after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered their bodies and they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. God's resurrection power raised them from the dead and they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on power of God showed up again. Revelation 20 and 12. God's resurrection power is real. You need to rehearse these scriptures and play this video. Revelation 20 and verse 12. And I saw the dead great and small standing and I saw the dead, great and small, standing together before the throne, and books were opened. Another book, which is the book of life, the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and hates gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what had been done. So wherever they were, wherever they died on the earth and the sea, God raised them up with his resurrection power and made them stand before him and his throne. This is in the future. This is what's going to happen. They're going to stand before God and have to be accountable for the sins and evil deeds they did. And it says, verse 14, Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So people can't even die who were evil and get away from God. Remember, we possess a mind and a soul as well as a body. We are a spirit and we live inside this shell. So when a person first ceases to exist in the body, their spirit is still alive. God's going to bring the evil people with their spirit inside of a body before him to stand before his judgment throne. And if they have not received Yahushua Yamashiach, the Messiah, as their personal Lord and Savior, they're going to end up with death and hate into the lake of fire. There you have it. Twelve scriptures of God's resurrection power. So those that are not saved, Father, we thank you in the name of Yahushua Yamashiach, for giving them your breath of life and destroying the sin and death 
in their lives, filling them with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Holy Ghost gives utterance. Those that uh, are born again and were doubting you, uh, going through just mental and spiritual and emotional changes, we loose your resurrection power into their lives to destroy every yoke and remove every burden. In Yahushua's name, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lamb prevails. Play this tape, video over and over. Share it with someone. God bless you. Bye-bye.